What's going on, YouTube OCD for EDC here? What I got for your face balls today. We have got a brand new box from the one and only Spider Co. It was sent to us by Northwest Knives. You guys already know the deal, but I'm excited about this one. I don't know exactly what's in this box, but I have some ideas. So let's just get into it. And we're going to start this one off with, uh, you know, doing a little bourbon and blades here. But I got out a nice bottle. So I figured that we would bust out the Colonel E.H. Taylor small batch. First and only, let the label tell the truth. Um, so this was a bottle that was actually gifted to me um, by my brother-in-law. Bless his heart. And so that's what we're going to get involved in here today. Um, a little E.H. Taylor. Very, very nice. So let's uh, pour up a little of that. And let's enjoy the beautiful E.H. Taylor while we take a look at what's in this box that came from, from Spyderco. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep, it's still pretty good. Still pretty good. All right, here's the box. Um, like I said, I think I know what's in here, or I think I know one of the knives that's in here, but this is what I'm going to use for a little unboxing knife. This is uh, one of the Manix 2s that I carry quite often. Uh, this happened to start out life as a Manix 2 lightweight. This one's in CPM Rex 45. If you guys want to go and check out uh, the Manix 2 kits, and whatever else uh, trips your trigger over at ocdfreedc.com, we would greatly appreciate it. And go and uh, check out Northwest Knives out in Meridian, Idaho. Uh, that's who deals with my uh, Spider Coat Collector Club. Great people out there at Northwest Knives. Really good folks. I got a paperclip, people. So that's nice. And. Uh, I don't even know what that label's for. They repurpose some boxes, you know? Let's just, uh, we'll just get the knives out of here. We're gonna leave the paperwork in the box for right now. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six boxes. Um, and we're just gonna start opening them and we'll see where it gets us, you know what I mean? Uh, Actually, we'll just go left to right. Ooh, this one feels heavy. What do we got? We got a Manix 2. Manix 2. What, what is this one? We got some paperwork here. I'm so used to all the uh, FRN knives that I've been getting lately. Okay, this is a Knifeworks exclusive. This is in CTS 204P. Uh, which is a great blade steel, uh, right in line with uh, 20CV and M390, and has a dark green G10 handle. Uh, all right. Awesome. Let me get this stuff put back in the box here. Okay. Like the dark green. Very nice. CTS 204P. Very, very nice knife. Uh, can't ever go wrong with the Manix 2. You guys know we offer the uh, upgraded ball cage kits with or without tritium. You can get them with just the slots and pick your own tritium. Um, and we have upgrade kits for the Manix 2. Um, you know, so go check out ocdfreedc.com. We would greatly appreciate it. But uh, Manix 2, one of my all time favorite knives. It's just a, it's a fantastic, fantastic knife. CTS 204P. All right, next up, what do we got here? So we've got a non, uh, non stainless steel, kind of expected this one to have a card in it because I think this is the knife that I was expecting to be in this package. Just happens to be the second one that I opened up here. Sure looking like it. Let's set this off to the side. And this is the one and the only Sage 5. This is in uh, kind of a burnt orange uh, G10. And it is in the Spyderco 
CPM Rex 121 blade steel. Now, for those of you that don't know, Rex 121 is uh, very similar uh, in edge retention to Maximet. Probably a little less toughness, um, but a very, very high edge retention steel, very high performing steel. Uh, this one is absolutely perfect. Uh, the Sage 5 is a wonderful, wonderful knife. Uh, this here is rocking the compression lock uh, at ocdfreedc.com. We also have CMEs that fit the Sage 5, the PM2, the Para 3. This one here happens to be a titanium uh, CME. So if you wanna go and pick up a CME, we have many of those options as well for the Shaman, uh, Shaman, whatever you wanna call it, uh, PM2, Para 3, Yo Jumbo, Little Native with the compression lock and a whole bunch of other models. Uh, so go and check those out. But this, this in Rex 121 is an absolute, I mean, that deserves another look at the old uh, E.H. Taylor. I really expected this to come with some paperwork talking a little bit about the blade steel, uh, but it did not. The CPM Rex 121 likely going to be up in the uh, 70 ish uh, HRC, maybe 71, 72 even. Very, very cool uh, blade steel, uh, high vanadium content, high molly, and yeah, just a, a really, really high performing edge retention steel. So, uh, and this knife right out of the box is just absolutely fantastic. Sage 5 is just a great model all the way around. And I really like it with the G10. So yeah, that's a good one. All right, next up, we have got, now this one's got some paperwork in it. This looked like another Sage 5. Okay, what do we have here? We have Spy 27 blade steel. So this is just all talking about uh, Spy 27. Um, okay. We're already familiar with Spy 27, but this looks like a Sage 5. Oh, it's a Sage 5 Lightweight. All right. Sage 5 Lightweight, again, uh, uh, CME fits the Sage 5 Lightweight as well. This is a good colorway. I like that. Looks nice. And like I said, you can't really go wrong. Get a full uh, four-finger grip on the Sage 5 uh, with the uh, half choil. And Spy 27, absolute great steel. So, so far, we're, we got some really, really nice stuff here on the table. Uh, next up, uh-oh, what do we got here? Again, non-stainless steel. And we got a little card. All right, so this is a sprint run. This is the Micro Melt PD number one uh, blade steel, which we have seen on a couple of other models. I think we had the uh, Endura and the Indela. Uh, so this, what we got going on here? The poison, the poison for the trolls is holding up the show here. Uh, so this is the Stretch 2 XL. Stretch 2 XL, we got a whole bunch of shit on the blade. Let me grab a little uh, cleaning cloth here. Let's get that wiped off. The Stretch 2 with this kind of plum uh, FRN color blacked out blade. Uh, again, this is a non-stainless steel. Uh, the Stretch 2 XL, awesome knife. This is a get to poking situation. Uh, Really uh, nice blade grind here. Blade centering, a little bit off um, on the show side. Let's see if we got any, yeah, it is loose. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. Generally, I don't receive these uh, like that, but uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I can probably, or well, I can tune that up. For right now, we're gonna leave it as it is. The Spyderco Stretch 2 XL in Micro Melt PD-1. Very cool. All right, next up. What are we, oh shit. This is the Lum Tanto. 
I didn't even know they were bringing out another version of this. So this is a Blade HQ exclusive. Um, this is the Bob Lum Tanto. Uh, this is a remake of an older design. Uh, this one's in M390. And this was a Blade HQ exclusive that was done uh, quite some time ago. The original one that came out, which I actually think I have sitting over here somewhere. The Lum Tanto. Yeah, I do. This was the original one that came out uh, from uh, Spider Cut or from Blade HQ. Also M390, but in a coated blade. So this here is in a non coated blade with. Uh, just stainless steel hardware and clip. Here is the Lum Tanto. It is a hollow grind, uh, saber hollow ground blade. It is a liner lock, just a beautiful knife, really. Really good in hand, just a nice size and a really, really nice, nice knife. So there you go. So we got the Lum Tanto and we got one more. Um, this looks like a military two, black on black. Military two with the compression lock. Again, uh, you know, if you wanna get a little uh, CME for your uh, military two, that's what it would look like. If you got a titanium one, uh, we offer them in many variations. Uh, and this one is fully serrated. You do get a, it looks like to be about an inch of blade uh, that is a plain edge maybe three quarters of an inch. It's a fully serrated blade. This one is in CPM S30V. Definitely can get to poking with that, with that uh, unit right there. Okay, well, there you go. Those are the knives. Uh, so we got the two Sages, the Manix 2, the uh, uh, Stretch 2 XL, the Lum Tanto, and the Military 2 in S30V. Let's try out our EH Taylor again. All right, let's uh, let's just get into this because you guys know the deal. Now we need to check some edges, right? We need to see. Uh, I can't remember where this thing come from. Uh, Seiki City, Japan, uh, on the Lum Tanto. Uh, these three are all going to be tight, or no? This one's going to be uh, Seiki City. This is going to be Tai Chung, right? Yeah. Tai Chung Taiwan on the Sage 5. I'm guessing this is also Tai Chung. Yeah. Tai Chung on the Sage 5 lightweight. And this will also be Seiki City. And then we've got, I think I just, yeah, I did. Just cut myself right there. See that? So that's what you get with a longer blade. Just freaking cut myself. <laughs> uh, and then we got the two uh, Golden Colorado models as bookends here. Look at that son of a, damn it. Where were you at on that one, dipshit? Um, okay, let's uh, see what we got here. Now that thing's gonna just start bleeding. But we're just gonna go in the order that we opened them up. Let me uh, dry this blood up real quick. All right, here we go. Uh, first up, Manix 2. It's a CTS 204P, uh, like a dark uh, forest or hunter green uh, G10. Golden Colorado. Here we go. Okay. Try not to get any, uh, any blood on anything here. Um, but uh, first up, the CTS 204P, 95. 95 grams on the old sharpness tester. Uh, for those that don't know, this is a best certified sharpness tester and it is repeatable. And the best way I can check uh, apexes and sharpness here at home. Uh, but it is a wonderful uh, tool as long as you use it correctly and it does a really good job. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna hold off on the uh, the uh, Rex 121, we'll, we'll leave that one for last, but here's the uh, Spy 27, Sage 5 lightweight in Spy 27, Tai Chung Taiwan, here we go. Holy shit. Okay, Tai Chung is not fucking around. Uh, the Spy 27 was a 40, 4-0 on the Spy 27. Uh, that is an absolute excellent result. 
Uh, let's uh, move this guy over. There we go. For those that don't know, anything under 200 is a very sharp knife. Anything sub 100 uh, is incredibly sharp. And for right out of the box, most manufacturers are not providing sub 100 edges on knives, at least not consistently. I couldn't even tell you the last time I had a Spyderco knife that was over 100 on the sharpness tester, but it's been quite a while. Uh, there's no doubt about it that Spyderco has been incredibly consistent with their uh, factory edges. All right, next up, Stretch 2 Micro Melt PD1 Blade Steel. Uh, here we go. Hold. Okay. Uh, we're gonna, <laughs> uh, that's a 25. Um, if that is, if that holds up and we can replicate that, that is the sharpest knife I have ever tested right out of the box. Um, I have sharpened a knife to a 25 and below that. Um, but now we know why that little bastard bit me, uh, because that motherfucker sharp is what's going on here. Um, but we're going to come back to this one. Um, I'm going to be careful with it so I don't cut the shit out of myself anymore. All right. The Lum Tanto. Here it is. M390. Uh, Blade HQ exclusive. Uh, Seiki City, Japan. Hollow ground. Uh, Saber ground blade. Let's see. Uh, let's see what it is. All right. Here we go. Holy fuck. Oh, okay. All right. Seiki City, Japan with a 45, 45 on the Lum Tanto. Uh, this is incredible guys. Like seriously. Um, you know, when the, when the worst knife by quite a margin actually is 95. Um, that's, I don't know what's going on at all the spider co factories. Cause uh, again, we've got three different factories represented here. So it's not even like these are all coming out of the same location. All right. Next up golden Colorado spider co military Two CPM S 30 V serrated. We're going to go for this serration right here. Uh, the serrated knives have historically been incredibly sharp, which makes sense because they're chisel ground. So they're actually going to have a final, a finer apex, you know, most of your, uh, plain edge knives, uh, just because they're chisel ground. So, you know, if they're, if it's sharpened at 15 or 20 degrees, um, you know, it's different than having uh, that on both sides where you've got 15 or 20 degrees inclusive. We'll uh, see what this uh, middle serration is. Here we go. Okay, 65, 65, uh, still a fantastic result. Um, you know, generally that's where I see those in the 70, 50, like 50 to 75 range. All right, last but not least, we've got the CPM Rex 121. Now, <clears throat> I've used a lot of Maximet. I have a lot of Maximet uh, Pair 3s, PM2s, uh, Manix Lightweights, uh, Manix 2 Lightweights. Uh, a lot of Maximet has been used around my household. Uh, it's what I use down in my shop. I beat the holy hell out of it. You know, it, it's a great steal. And yeah, I really like Maximet. I really like this EH Taylor as well. So let's get involved in that again. Mm-hmm. Okay. I have not used a lot of Rex 121. I've only ever had one knife in Rex 121. And it was a custom. Uh, so I'll be interested to see how this stuff performs. It should be on par with Maximet as far as edge retention is concerned. It's going to have a little less toughness, but it's kind of a moot point. Um, anytime you get above like 68 HRC, you're getting into that realm of steels that aren't going to be as tough. Still to this day, the best performing steel uh, that I think I've ever had was a custom that was S125V this uh, Rex 121 should be quite impressive. So let's see what it is. Let's check it out. Uh, so here we go. Uh, tai Chung Taiwan Sage 5 Rex 121 blade steel. First of its kind from Spyderco. 
and let's see if Tai Chung did it like they did the Spy 27. All right, here we go. <laughs> okay, so we got an 85, uh, still a phenomenal result, but that Spy 27 was nasty sharp, uh, and that micro melt uh, was just on another level. And we're gonna we're gonna verify that 25 that we got earlier because you know how it is. I don't want to be talking out of school. Uh, what do we have here? I think so. That's our lineup right there. So the Rex 121 and the two Golden Colorado knives were still sub hundred, um, but the uh, three worst performing knives out of the group here. All right, we need to verify that this thing was even remotely close to that 25, and we're gonna test it one more time. I'm gonna try to get it around the same area, and we'll just see. We'll see what we get. All right. Seiki City, Japan. Stretch 2 XL, Micro Melt PD-1, test number two. Here we go. Okay, so we got a 45 on the second test, still incredibly sharp. Uh, once you start getting under that sub 50 range, I mean, it can vary a little bit. Um, you know, we're talking about a difference of 20 grams here. Uh, you know, 20 grams is is not a lot. You know, there's no doubt it's a, it's a fucking sharp knife is what we're talking about here. So that's what we got going on. The winner of the day, uh, certainly the uh, Stretch 2 XL. Um, this Spy 27, uh, man, the Sage 5 is such a good little knife. It really, really is. The compression lock, um, the Sage 5 lightweight, a great knife. You got the deep carry wire clip. It is, of course, reversible. Sage 5, awesome, awesome little knife. The Rex 121, even though it wasn't the sharpest in the bunch, of course, that can be tuned up. These are just factory edges. Um... But all in all, this was quite the grouping of knives here. Can't go wrong with the uh, steels. So we had Spy 27. We had PD-1, uh, or I'm sorry, Micro, micro Melt PD-1. I can't talk right now. Uh, S30V, M390, uh, 204P, and then, of course, the Rex 121. I mean, and let's just be real here. That's just a good looking knife. In my opinion, I like the colorway and the Rex 121, of course, just makes it that much cooler. Um, this is this is honestly what Spyderco is all about. Uh, you know, pushing the boundaries on steels. I don't know any other manufacturer that's even going to attempt to run Rex 121 on a production knife uh, because... Once you start getting into those higher HRCs, uh, steels, you know, their losses are going to be significant. Their blade warpage, you know, God only knows how many blades they're throwing away to be able to have good production runs. Um, time will tell with the Spyderco seconds that become available. Um, I will certainly try and do my best to get my hands on some Spyderco seconds to, you know, uh, share them all out with you guys that don't have an opportunity to go and get some of those things. But, uh, you know, I, I'm hopeful that, uh, this is going to be uh, heat treated. Well, spider code generally does not uh, let us down in that regard for a production company. This is the epitome of what makes spider code great. And yeah, hopefully you guys are, are digging it and enjoying it. Um, but you know, we didn't have any copies of Blade Steels here. We've got three different factories from around the world. Tai Chung, obviously, uh, doing some really high level work here. Action on both of these Sage Fives is spectacular, uh, right out of the box. And both of them were uh, very sharp. The blade grinds look great. That's fantastic. This motherfucker cut me. So there's that. And. You know, of course, we got the, the Manix 2, uh, which is just near and dear to my heart. The Lum Tanto, the only thing on the table with the hollow grind. And then we got the Milli 2. Um, it, it's not a bad day when the worst thing on your in your lineup here, and that's all a subjective opinion, is a fully serrated Military 2. Uh, so, you know, not a bad deal. 
I had high expectations for this box and it did not disappoint. It even made me bleed right there on that finger. You know what I mean? Uh, but let's uh, finish off this E.H. Taylor, put this video to bed. Uh, go and check out our website, ocdforedc.com, and uh, you know pick up some CMEs, some Manix 2 kits, whatever. There's all sorts of stuff there. Uh, we greatly appreciate all the support, and hopefully you guys have enjoyed this little video. I'm going to uh, go and edit said video and... You know, maybe get involved in a little more uh, Colonel E.H. Taylor Small Batch Bottled in Bond. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Peace.